Go find someone else to annoy. Has someone ever spoken to you like that? How would you describe such a person? Unkind? Mean? Rude? All of these words are character traits. to infer. Inferencing is when we combine clues with our background knowledge to figure something out. Last week we inferred to find out what was going on in a scenario, but we can also use clues and our background knowledge to determine a character's character traits, like the girl at the beginning of our video. Go find someone else to annoy. Our clues to her character were her words, her tone of voice, and her facial expression. She said, go find someone else to annoy. Her face was kind of like condescending, and her tone of voice someone else to annoy. was clearly irritated. We can put those clues together to determine or infer that this girl is just unkind. When we're reading, we can't see anybody's face, so we have to rely on the author's description of the character's thoughts, words, and actions. And together, the thoughts, words, and actions are our clues to the character's traits. Some character traits are positive, and some of them are negative. Here's some positive character traits. Honest, brave, compassionate, unselfish, loyal, hardworking, responsible, humble, generous, loving, kind, patient, determined, adventurous, optimistic, silly, funny, sentimental. Here's some negative character traits. Selfish, dishonest, unkind, mean, or rude, disrespectful, impatient, greedy, annoying, bossy, shy, stubborn. Let's look at these examples of Pa in Across the Wide and Lonesome Prairie. Pa and the other men are tightening ropes around the wagons for they were taken apart before loading. Here we see that Pa is working. That's an action. That's a clue. Just by itself, that clue doesn't tell us very much. But let's take a look at another passage where we see Pa doing a different action. Suddenly, Pa jumped into the river to turn our oxen because they were trying to swim downstream. So here we see Pa jumping into a river to try to save them in a situation where things are going wrong. Let's look at a third passage. This gave Pa and Mr. Lewis an idea. Soon enough, they had bartered wood to make a small wagon with three hoops. They bought a tent, and with the help of Mr. and Mrs. Biggs sewing, they turned the canvas into a top. They traded beans for two mules with harnesses and neck collars. What on earth, asked Ma, there stood a miniature prairie schooner, about five feet long and three feet wide with one set of wheels. So in this passage, we see Pa working together with somebody else, to build a wagon for someone else. So putting these three clues together, what could we determine about Pa's character? First of all, does this tell us about a positive character trait or a negative character trait? Positive, right. So which one of these positive character traits would describe Pa based on his actions? Hardworking or possibly responsible or maybe even loving or kind? Now let's put all of this information together into the sentence frame that we introduced last week. When the text said that Pa was tightening ropes around wagons, jumping into the river to turn the oxen, and building a wagon for someone else, I was thinking that Pa is hardworking because in all three of these circumstances, we see Pa working either to help his family or to help someone else. Now I'd like you to try it, although this time we're going to be focusing on a different character, Mrs. Big. As I read this passage, focus on what the author tells us about Mrs. Big's thoughts, words, or actions, and what that tells us about her character. When Mrs. Big heard that Pepper is to be married, she dug in her trunk and pulled out one of her lace tablecloths. She marched over to our camp, pulling a cart where Mr. Big sits like he's riding in a little train. She held the lace up to Pepper and said, Honey, I'm going to make you the prettiest wedding dress you'll ever set eyes on. And she did. For five evenings, Mrs. Big sewed and cut and measured until she had a creamy white dress with long sleeves and a bow that ties at the waist. So what are some things that Mrs. Big thought, said, or did in this passage? Try to list at least three things. Great. Now what do those three things tell you about Mrs. Big's character? Does it tell you something positive or something negative? Great. Look through the list of positive character traits. Which one of these seems to describe Mrs. Big based on her actions, words, and thoughts?
Now put it all together using the sentence frame. When the text said blank, I was thinking that Mrs. Big is blank because blank. Nice job. Here's what I would say about Mrs. Big. When the text said that Mrs. Big used one of her own lace tablecloths to make a wedding dress for Pepper, that she spent five evenings sewing and cutting and measuring, and that she added details like long sleeves and a bow that ties at the waist. I was thinking that Mrs. Big is a very generous person because to be generous means to give freely. And Mrs. Big here gave freely of her belongings and of her time. So now you have a task. Just below the instructions on this Flipgrid video, I have three attachments. One says Hattie, one says Mrs. Kenker, and one says Aunt June. Pick one, and when you open that attachment, you're going to see a passage from across the wide lonesome prairie that focuses on that character. Read it carefully and look for clues so that you can infer a character trait about the character that you chose. Then share your thinking using this sentence frame in a Flipgrid video. Happy inferring!